Thank you, Christopher. I would like to introduce Kenneth Canfield, our class valedictorian. Woo! Superintendent Richard Cavallaro. Thank all of you for being, here, for being here. I would like to thank my mom and dad for all their support and for always teaching me to work hard and push through whenever life gets tough. I would also like to thank my sister, who you've all met, for being my biggest cheerleader and always having my back. Without any of you, I wouldn't be, be up here today. Up until this point, our lives have been easy. Things were planned out for us, but now the rules have changed. From this day on, we get to decide. So, where do we go from here? Like myself, many will be going to work. Some of you will be going to college, and some a little bit of both. But the bravest of us will be going to the military. With all the different pathways we're all about to take, there is no life-changing advice that I can give all of you. So instead, I'm gonna tell you a story. Don't worry, I'll try and keep it brief. In the past few months, people kept asking me how I became valedictorian. And to be honest, I never really had an answer. Obviously, I did my homework, did all the tests and quizzes, but I couldn't give a real answer. So, I got to thinking about all the advice that I've been given over the years and what actually stuck with me. For one, I always remember that the world owes us nothing. If you want something, you have to work for it. And when all is said and done, make sure that you can look back and be proud of what you've accomplished. Make sure that you did it for you, not because it's what you were supposed to do or what everyone thought you were supposed to do, but because it's what you wanted to do. We're defined by our choices. So tell me, how can you be defined if these choices were never yours? While making these choices, there will always be someone doubting you. Someone saying that you won't make it or that you're not good enough. But their doubt is just one more reason, one more thing compelling you to succeed. To quote President Donald Trump, treat the word impossible as nothing more than motivation. There are many people maybe even some of you, who never thought that I could be valedictorian. But rather than giving up, I used that doubt to push myself even harder. And look where that got me. <laughs> On our capstone project this year, one of the first things that Mr. Priya had us all write down was our short-term and our long-term goals. Two sentences, that was it. Most of you probably don't even know what you wrote for that. But what we don't realize is just how important those two sentences really are. Without a goal in life, something to strive for, you'll drift through life thinking that all the hard work that you put in was meaningless. Nine years ago, a few of our classmates and I went through something unspeakable. However, I like to think that this experience has impacted my life for the better, and it's just one more step on the path that has led me to this stage. Because of this, I always ask myself, how do I want people to remember me? Well, he had a great job, big house, and a lot of money. Or do I want them to say that I was a great husband, amazing parent, grandparent, uncle, and a good friend? Don't live for a resume. Live for the moment, because you never know which one is going to be your last. And live for the fr fr uh, family and friends around you, because in the end, they are how you'll be remembered. So, for the people who have asked, I finally have an answer. I became valedictorian by setting a meaningful goal and working to make that goal a reality. I hope Abitech has given all of you as many great memories as it has given me. It has been my privilege to share the past four years with all of you, from our horrifying exploratory days, to buying everything off the food cart, to some patchy capstone projects, and very questionable parking jobs. <laughs> Congratulations, Abitech, class of 21.